takes the last of the open water. You're not thinking on wearing that thing. Well, Becky did it on purpose so you wouldn't mistake me for a deer. Not that you're likely to hit me or anything else. <laughs> oh, what particular two? I can knock a flea off a hound's ear at 50 yards. And if you're gonna wear that, you can just hunt along. Well, it suits me. Meet you back here at sundown. Hey, Josh. What'd you find? I don't know. Hmm. Him Boyd. You must be the artist. Not he, she. M. Boyd. That stands for Millie Boyd. Did you know her? Yeah, I knew her back in Virginia. Kind of a gal that had a whole lot of brains and not too much sense. She and her husband we're going to make a book about the American wilderness and sell it in England. He's going to do the writing, she's going to do the painting. It looks like they made it to the wilderness, all right. Where would she see a thing like this? Oh, I don't know. Let's look at another one. That looks like an Indian mask. Didn't look like any Indians in these parts. Millie and Sam, right here in these woods. No, not necessarily, Josh. They could have drifted down the river a long ways last spring during the high waters. Could have traveled a long way before it snagged up here. And you never know which one of these feeder streams it came in on. Dan, do you mind if I keep these? Well, I reckon since you know the artist, you're entitled. Well, I reckon I'll scare me up a deer. <laughs> you wear that, you're going to scare them. Well, this will attract them. I may hang it on the bush as a decoy. Good hunting. for seeming to ignore your presence, but it's not every day one takes a drops of versicolor, is it? <laughs> Magnificent, isn't it? A drops of what? Oh, a drops of versicolor. Uh, more commonly known as the hydrangea sphinx, one of the hawk moth family, a rare and beautiful species. I've been hunting one since spring. 
Well, what are you going to do with it? Do with it? Do with it? Oh, I'm going to put it to death, painlessly, of course. And then I'm going to mount it in some suitable manner where I can enjoy its gorgeous color and beautiful symmetry for years. But I must ask your forgiveness again. I am Sir Hubert Winthrop Spencer, philosopher, linguist, and man of science. FBRS, FFRS, and a fellow of many other royal societies, which is to no point now, since I haven't attended a meeting or contributed a paper for years. <laughs> and you, sir? I'm Josh Clements. I'm a hunter. It's what I do for a living. A hunter? Hmm. I, too, am a hunter. You see, we have things in common. Uh, do you hunt the Lepidoptera, or are you more interested in the beetles? Well, this time of the year, it's mainly deer. Deer? Deer. Oh, deer. Oh, dear! Ruminant mammals of the family Cividae. And you're also interested in that uh, work of art over there, eh? If that's what you call it, I mean, I know the Indians do some painting around on rocks, but I never saw nothing that fancy. And the way it looks, it's been around here a spell, too. 255 years, to be precise. No, that is not precise. 255 years, four months, and three days. Now that is precise. How long have you been in these parts? Oh, several years, captive to its golden charms. Maybe you met a couple that was through here a few months back, Sam and Millie Boyd. Well, I couldn't very well have met them unless they did come through. <laughs> but what makes you think they did? This. Well, now, the woman I was talking about drew this. And... She drew these, so these have got to be around here somewhere. What do you make of these? Those are reproductions of, uh, of the death mask and the sun god of the Aztecs. Aztecs? What are Aztecs? Well, the Aztecs are some of the early peoples of Mexico. Highly civilized, but savage peoples. Same people that are responsible for carving that stone over there. But for the life of me. I can't figure out exactly how you came to be in possession of those drawings. Well, found them on a river bank a few miles back. Rather, a friend of mine found them. A friend? Yeah, Daniel Boone. We split up this morning. What's worrying you? Oh, a mystery, Josh. A mystery. I want you to help me solve it. I'll show you the originals of the death mask and the sun god. Now, wait a minute. If you got the originals of these and Millie drew them, well, you had to meet Millie and Sam. A terrifying mystery. You'll have to see it to believe it. Now, come along. You don't carry a gun, Sir Hubert? Oh, well, I own one, of course, but it would be of very little use in hunting moths and butterflies. The impact of the ball would destroy the aesthetic quality. I wasn't talking about moths and butterflies. What if an Indian jumped you? Jumped? An Indian? Jumped. Oh, I begin to comprehend you. You mean if an Aborigine were to leap on me in an unguarded moment? Uh, yeah, uh, something like that. It's completely impossible. I'm a troglodyte, you see. You're a what? A troglodyte, uh, one who inhabits caves or uh, caverns. The entrance to the cave is... Uh, right over there among those rocks. You'll have to look very sharp to see it. A troglodyte? Hubert? Hubert? Ah, oh, you found it. Uh, come in, Josh. I'm just about to strike a light for you. Quite a bright light, wasn't it? The brightest that you'll see for many years. For now, you descend into the Stygian darkness, which is to be your tomb, although I hope to enjoy your company for many years to come. <sighs> yeah. 
would have been considerate of you to have weighed a few pounds less. However, off we go. Set, but I hardly expected a visitor when last I left here. Tita! Now you club me. Oh, a cruel necessity. But, but I made amends by saving your life. Yeah, from your own trap. No, no, that trap was designed by those who placed the treasure here. Fantastic, isn't it? Ah, how do you open this thing? Ah, careful, there's obsidian knives are sharp. Well, then get me out of here. As soon as is humanly possible. treasure of the Aztecs. All that could be saved from the rapacious hands of Cortez and his Spaniards. Oh, go ahead, touch it, it's quite safe now. <laughs> Sorry, that slipped my, uh, my, uh... Your mind. Oh, yes. <clears throat> the throne of Montezuma. Brought north for 255 years ago. Oh. Uh, go ahead. Sit on it. Sit on it. Go on. Sit on the throne. Sit. I sit. don't want to sit. Would you just let me alone? Oh, put on the crown. See what it feels like to be the living incarnation of the sun god. I, I don't want to put on that. Uh, uh, who are, I mean, who were they? Ah, uh, <laughs> These are the bones of the unfortunate people who transported the treasure northward. Slaves who were rewarded for their labors by death so that no one would know where it was hidden. Intelligent slaves with an average cranial capacity of 1,500 cubic centimeters, which uh, I dare say Compares roughly with your own. Oh, but if you don't mind, I'd just soon not find out right now. Uh, 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 you, you mean to tell me that, that them fellas pushed that stone all the way up here from Mexico? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, this stone, symbol of Huitzilopochtli, uh, was hewn and carved right on the spot. Well, now, that's the same thing that's in Millie's picture. Ah, yes, and so well drawn that the inscription is legible. See what it says. You mean you can read that stuff? Oh, as easily as you read English. You uh, do read English, I trust. 
Tolerably. Huh. Well, I quote, Now is the sun of the Aztec sunk beneath the darkness of the world, here to sleep until the earth is drenched with Spanish blood, and then like grains of corn drenched by rain, I shall rise again. <laughs> That's a terrible rhyme, but only in the translation. Here to sleep. Thus it means here. This is a curse against the conquerors and a prophecy that we may yet live to see fulfilled. <laughs> well, that uh, sounds like it guarantees us a nice long life. If nobody was left that knew about this, how'd you find it? Ah, I am a man of genius. <laughs> I came to the new world to study its insects and to immortalize my name by affixing it to a hitherto unclassified moth or beetle. Teleus Polyphemus Hubertius Spencerius. <laughs> but their ancient civilizations interested me more, and I learned to decipher the most difficult of their hieroglyphs from the few codices that were saved from the fires of the Inquisition. I found clues in a strangely marked trail leading northward. I followed it, destroying the marks as I came so that no other might do the same. It led me to that curiously carved stone where we met today. Confess, Joshua! You knew that stone was a guide to this cavern? I hardly had time to look at it. You were hunting it! No. Look, I can see where a man sitting on top of all this gold would have to be suspicious of anybody coming this valley, but you've got to take my word for it. I didn't have the slightest inkling about any of this. Oh, well, I guess you're right, but now that you know what it is, it doesn't make any difference. Oh, come along, I promised you food and drink. <laughs> Do you eat bird? <laughs> Birds! Birds! <laughs> Gilly, hi ho, boy! Come, bird, come! <laughs> you're quite a collector, aren't you, Sir Hubert? Yeah. All these insects, that treasure. And somewhere along the way, you collected my rifle. Oh, yes, I left it by the, uh, the mouth of the cave. Firearms are quite dangerous in here. A single shot might bring down tons of rock on us. And uh, considering all the wealth that's here, you might be tempted to uh, shoot. Now, that's downright suspicious. I mean, after all, you brought me here. Ah, the drawings brought you here. The mystery of it. Can spirits transport material objects? Do dead men walk? What is justice? Who is Sylvia? How fast is a snail's pace? <laughs> what the devil am I talking about, anyhow? <laughs> what are you doing with my drawing? I'm using them to roast the grouse with. But you're burning them. Why, if it's such a mystery? Uh, I tried to figure out the mystery while you were asleep. <laughs> but it was no use. No use at all. The eyes cannot see, the ears cannot hear. The hand cannot touch. Man's feet are unable to sing. The liver is unable to plumb the heights of the intellect of man. There's no mystery about one thing. Millie made those drawings and she had to be in this cave to do it. And most likely Sam was with her. Ha! That is not the mystery. Then they were here. No, I said that is not the mystery. Then what is the mystery? The mystery is how those drawings ever got out of the cave. Well, Millie and Sam took them out with them when they left, I guess. No. Why not? They never left. You mean they're still here somewhere? If you believe in the immortality of the spirit, they have departed. But in a purely physical sense, they are here. Dead. Uh, you collected them, too. Lured them into this cave just like you did me and then killed them. Maybe you got them stuck up on pins somewhere, too. I do not have them stuck up on pins. I wanted them to live. Sam Boyd shouldn't have tried to escape. Tried to escape from what? Wait a minute. <laughs> Now, you're going to sit down 
and you're going to tell me exactly what happened. Because I got to give a complete account to their people when I get out of here. Oh, no, Josh. Come, it'll never do for us to quarrel. I'll give you your first lesson in biology, the anatomy of the goat moth. I don't want to know about a goat moth. Oh, by spring, you ought to be able to call all of these by their Latin names. By spring? Certainly you should be able to master it by then, and if not, we've got a lot of time. I told you I'm a captive here, a captive to its golden charms, and you, sir, are a captive too. Who's a captive? I can leave here any time I want to. You cannot leave any time you want to. You cannot leave, ever. Huh? You must be joking. Who's going to stop me? I'm bigger than you are, I'm younger than you are, and you ain't even carrying a gun. Well, then go. By all means, leave, go, depart, leave. I shall miss you if you go. Ah, but I should warn you that each one of these passageways leads to a hundred others, and most of those lead to death. We're a long way from the mouth of the cave, and you have no idea which direction it is. And you don't have a light. Wait! Come back, Josh. Not that way. Stop, I tell you. Careful, there's a very deep... I told you it was a very deep... I know! Listen. I've computed the fall at five seconds. Gravitational acceleration, according to Galileo, is 32 feet per second per second. Therefore, the surface of the water is about 480 feet. <laughs> Just shut up and get me out of here! <laughs> Easy. This is where Sam Boyd left us. <sighs> Millie, too? Oh, the shock of his passing was too much for her. It was murder just as sure as if you'd done it with your own hand. No, I wanted them to live. Yeah, and you wanted them as prisoners. I think we'd better get where it's a little more comfortable and talk this over. Oh, excellent idea, excellent. You know, I need your companionship. Otherwise, I might go mad. I sometimes sit here when my resolve weakens. It strengthens my sense of responsibility. Uh-huh. You know, I'm beginning to understand what worries you, Sir Hubert. Millie and Sam were here. Millie made them drawings. Millie and Sam never left. But them drawings did. And you're worried as to whether somebody else might have found this place, too. <laughs> Why would such a person take those worthless drawings when there's all of this and all of that? Huh. How do you know that's all they took? Gold's heavy stuff, Sir Hubert. He might have just taken all he could carry. Would you have missed it? And if he did, he's going to be back with help. He probably took the drawing just to prove what he had found. No. No. That's impossible. No one could get in here without a map any more than you could get out. Oh. Those drawings got out of here, didn't they? Well, perhaps some small animal, a, a pack rat, perhaps. Oh, you said a friend of yours found those drawings. Daniel, uh, uh, boom. Then he's seen the drawings, too. <laughs> You're a very nervous man, Sir Hubert. It's going to get worse. There are going to be people looking for Sam Millie Boyd, people looking for me. If you want to get that treasure out of here, you better do it right. What do you mean? Simple. You pack up all this gold we can carry, take it out of here while we still got a chance. I'm not going to take any of it. You can use me as a pack mule. One load, Sir Hubert. You'll be a rich man for the rest of your life. You can hire an army to come back here and haul this out. Sacrilege! I read you the inscription. This gold belongs to Witzel Pochley, sun god of the Aztecs, here to remain until the earth is drenched in Spanish blood. 
You are an educated man. I mean, you can't believe all that stuff. And why not? When the prophecy is so close to fulfillment. Over two centuries ago, the Spaniards invaded Mexico. They won their ways into the chambers of Montezuma, which will potch his living representative on Earth. They killed him! A slap in the face of the god himself! They tore down his temples and burned all his sacred books! They stole all his treasure! All except this! And the sun god bided his time. And what did the Spaniards do with the gold? They melted it down into ingots to build the mightiest armada the world has ever known to send against England! Do not forget that I am an Englishman. And where is that mighty armada now? From the English Channel to the North Sea coast, the hulls of the homes of fishes and the gold that built them is gone. And Brazil is lost to them and soon the whole Western world, and yet you doubt that I should believe in a curse and a prophecy. I say to you, sir, beware. Beware how you slap the face of a pagan god. One hundred and thirty warships set sail, but their leaders forgot the sun god's curse. And in the Straits of Dover, that sun went out. And in the gale that arose, in the howl of the tempest, in the crack of the lightning, could be heard the voice of Wixlapotchley crying, Revenge! And in the cannonade, the guns of the ships of Sir Francis Drake could be heard the cry of Wixlapotchley beating the attack again. It's a woman's voice. She may be hurt. Come! <laughs> That's Millie. You said she was dead. I said that in a purely spiritual sense, she and her husband had departed. Millie? Millie? What's wrong with her? Millie. Millie? Millie, you know me. I'm Josh Clements. Oh, come, come. You must cease this unseemly display of emotion. You're under the protection of the sun god, and nothing can happen to you. Nothing to speak of. Millie, I am Josh Clements. I was painting a little grass skirt for my dolly. When the ceiling fell, I have to get back to my painting. My dolly will be getting cold. Millie, you remember me. I worked for your daddy before you were married. You remember the plantation in Williamsburg? You gotta remember Sarah Howard. Pete Logan? I'm afraid it's no use. Although I hoped it might be a stay with her, talk to her. Perhaps it might bring her to a sense, but I doubt it. Millie? Wait a minute. Now, this is going just about far enough. Now, you've got her a prisoner in there, and you're going to get her out. You hear me? I regret her condition as much as you do, but my first responsibility is to reach the Botchley. You forget Botchley and lead us out of here. I'm going to break your neck. May I remind you that if you break my neck, there will be no one to bring you food or tallow for candles. You and Mrs. Boyd will starve to death in darkness. You're already killing her. She needs sunlight and fresh air. She has sunlight and fresh air and leafy vegetables. She needs companionship. Stay with her. Talk to her. Comfort her. Wait a minute. Where are you going? Out! To find your friend Daniel Boone and persuade him to join us. I don't want him to tell anyone about those drawings. Yeah. Maybe you better try that. Don't try to follow me!
I told you, I do not like being followed. It makes my flesh crawl. I'm gonna... <laughs> Do you remember, Millie, that evening in the spring when the river was high and the moon was low, the curlews cry in the afterglow when you were just sixteen? you lost your mind. I never know when he'll be watching me. But, but why? I, I mean, why'd you do it? So he'll leave me alone. He's quite mad, as you've probably realized by now. He frightens me. And just maybe, if he's convinced I've lost my mind, he'll not watch me so closely and I'll have a chance to escape. few days he takes me outside for a little sunshine. I'm always blindfolded, my hands are tied, but someday he just might decide that isn't necessary and I can try to get away. Well, if you go in and out, even if you're blindfolded, you gotta, well, you gotta sorta remember the way. I've tried counting my footsteps, remembering the turns, but each time he takes me by a different route. 
He has all the cunning of a madman. Oh, I know. He seems to think that the sun god is going to rise again and he's going to rise along with him and be king of all the Aztecs. I'll tell you, I think you got him convinced this time. I know one thing, he's worried. You made some drawings when you first came here and somehow those drawings left this cavern. Yes, he showed them to me. I pretended not to recognize them. Well, how did they get out of here? I don't know. Sam was carrying them when we tried to escape. That was months ago. He slipped and fell into one of those bottomless wells. That's not just a well. That's an underground river. You know, he might have floated out of here just like that pouch. Oh, no, Sam could never have floated, not even for a minute. Why? Because as long as we were trying to escape, he insisted upon taking some of the gold. He'd knock Sir Hubert out and load it up with as much as he could carry. I begged him to leave it. When he fell... Hmm. Went down like a rock. I'm sorry, Millie. At least it is quick. And it gives me an idea. This is the place. Oh, I've been here. Listen, you wait right here. Joshua, be careful. Don't worry, I have a memory to keep me careful. You can't see it. Straight down. get out of there. Gives me an idea. Sir Hubert's going to be in for a shock when he gets back. to have noticed your presence, but it's not every day that one gets a diapsa of the sicolore, is it? No. The idea is to fix it to where Sir Hubert hadn't got any reason to stay around here any longer. You mean, throw the gold overboard? That's one way of putting it. You got any objections? Oh, not for me. That gold cost Sam his life. But there's no guarantee that Hubert will take us out with him. No, but it's a lot more likely. If he got no treasure, he's got no reason to stick around here. That stuff's heavy. There's a layer. As a stranger, it's been very difficult for me to take care of her. Uh, Josh is with her right now. That's why he didn't come to greet you. Well, if she's been here for two years, why didn't you bring her back to civilization? There are reasons why that's impossible. Excellent reasons. Soon you'll comprehend it completely. 
Well, I'm looking forward to that. Now, where is this cavern? Close now. Just wait here and I'll make sure that we're unobserved. I've already made sure of that. Oh. Well, it's in the rocks over there. You'll have to look sharp to find it. Now, go slow. The footing inside is precarious. I figure I'd make it with no trouble. No trouble at all. first. Sun God. Let's go. Uh, now for old weeks apart. I got a feeling Sir Hubert will never leave here as long as he's around. And everything we've done is for nothing. We'll never be able to move that. A lever. I gotta find something I can use as a lever. The axe! I can break him up chunk at a time and throw him in that river. I just remembered something Sir Hubert said. Beware of how you slap the face of a pagan god. Oh, Joshua, it's no time to think of that now. Old Pachi might get kind of insulted if you throw him in that underground river. Uh, yeah, he's probably already insulted in him. Well, here goes.
talk about a hard head. There's a crack already in it up there. Yeah. appreciated it before. Oh, how do you think I feel? I'd begun to think I'd never see the outside world again. I'm not real sure this isn't a dream. I'll wake up back in that cave again. Well, I feel the other way around. Sir Hubert and the goal is a dream. I just now woke up. Well, I know one thing. I was the richest man on this earth there for a spell. All that go. And just had to turn around and walk away from it. Well, you know, Josh, that's something you tell your children. Ah, you know I ain't got no younger. I guess we should think about getting started. Before I forget, here's your ball of yarn. I should throw this away. It might be easier than trying to explain to Becky. Oh, well. Thank you. 